probably one of the easiest but most misunderstood aspects of driveline setup, diagnosis, and repair is the measurement and calculation of universal joint operating angles. The purpose of this video is to help you to better understand the basics of this simple but important operation. Let's take a look at how it's done. In this video, we'll experience the measurement and calculation of a common drive shaft application. To measure the driveline slopes used to calculate the working angles, you will need a protractor. It must be capable of accuracy to one quarter of a degree. Usually, this requires a spirit level protractor, or better yet, the Spicer Angle Master. Let's begin by finding the slopes of the components involved. They are the transmission, drive lines, and the rear axle. First, we'll measure the slope of the transmission. It's the actual center line of the output shaft. It can usually be measured from a flat surface 90 degrees to or parallel to the output shaft of the transmission. Accurately measuring the slopes is extremely important. You must make sure you are measuring the true center lines of the components involved. There are adapters available for the angle master to allow the measurement of slopes to be taken directly off the U-joint caps in light duty and quick disconnect applications. This is a very accurate way to obtain a reading. Another good method to obtain a reading in heavy duty full round applications is to remove the bearing cap and take the reading directly off the yoke. In this application, remove the snap rings from the universal joint and take your reading directly off the cap utilizing an angle master adapter. This slope measures four degrees down. The next slope we must have is the center line of the coupling shaft. This is measured directly off the tube. This slope measures seven degrees down. Now the drive shaft. This slope measures eight degrees down. Finally, we'll measure the slope of the axle. This is the actual center line of the pinion shaft. This slope measures six degrees down. If you noticed, as I measured slopes, I said they were either up or down. This refers to the inclination of the slope as viewed from the side of the vehicle. If the slope descends from the front to the rear of the vehicle, the slope would be down. If the slope rises from the front to the rear, it would be up. Now that we have accurate measurements taken, let's calculate our angles. Before we start the math, let's take a look at what we mean by a universal joint operating angle. We need a universal joint to transmit power through an angle. This means we'll have two slopes intersecting each other at a given point. The point where these two slopes intersect will form an angle. This is the operating angle. Now let's do the actual calculation. We know that the transmission slope is four degrees down. The coupling shaft slope is seven degrees down. The drive shaft slope is eight degrees down. And finally, the axle slope is six degrees down. Now, add or subtract the intersecting slopes depending on the following. If both slopes are in the same direction, subtract the lesser slope from the greater slope to obtain the operating angle. If both slopes are traveling in different directions, add the two. Let's calculate the operating angles in our example. Since the transmission slope and the coupling shaft slope are in the same direction, down will subtract the lesser from the greater to obtain our first operating angle. Our first operating angle is three degrees. Our next operating angle is formed by the coupling shaft and the drive shaft slope. Once again, they're in the same direction, down. So we'll subtract the lesser from the greater and our second operating angle is one degree. Finally, our third operating angle is formed by the drive shaft slope and the axle slope. Once again, they are both in the same direction, down. So we will subtract the lesser from the greater and our final operating angle is two degrees. No matter how many universal joints you have in a given application, all the operating angles are calculated in the same manner. Just remember to add or subtract slopes where they intersect to calculate the angle. 
Once the universal joint operating angles are calculated, you can refer to the service manual published by the Spicer Universal Joint Division to make sure they are correct or contact your Spicer representative. Remember, if you have any questions, feel free to contact your Spicer representative or call the Spicer Universal Joint Division Technical Department.